What's going on everybody, Estas here. Welcome back to another video. So today we're going to be doing an M1 Finance tutorial here for 2021 so you guys know exactly what you need to know to get up and running, to get your money working for you in the stock market with M1 Finance. So if you guys find value, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, join the Strive Smart Discord chat, the Facebook group, all of those are linked down below. And if you guys are interested, check out the M1 playlist down below where I go over this portfolio that you guys see right here and go over literally in 30 episodes how I started it from zero dollars to where it is today over $10,500. So let's get into it. And what you guys see right here is obviously M1 Finance. I personally have over $10,000 in M1 Finance, and I've actually been using them since back in the beginning of July of 2019. So over about a year and a half at this point, I've been on M1 Finance. And the awesome thing about it, what really drew me into M1 Finance is the pie system. Take a look here. And this is what you guys will do once you actually open up an M1 Finance account. You're going to make a pie. And for me, I have about 20 slices. I think 21 slices. Let me count here really quickly. Yeah, I have 21 slices here in this portfolio. And the idea is to create your pie and to add however many slices you want in that pie and pretty much divvy them up to whatever percentage you want them to be of the entire pie and in this case you guys can see I have again 21 positions and all of them are around three to five to seven percent of my portfolio and you guys can see seven percent here is DGRO which is a dividend growth ETF and that's just the way I like it and I personally have this portfolio set up to be more of a dividend growth portfolio and to have a lot of different companies in different industries industries so I can be diversified within the stock market. And it's really simple. If I actually wanted to make a brand new pie to show you guys here on the video how it works, all you have to do is go to research at the top, then you go down here and click my pies, and then you click create a new pie. And let's say in this particular pie, I wanted it to be more of, let's say, a tech-oriented pie. All I would do is do, okay, Apple, Microsoft, for example here, guys, right? Amazon, Google. Um, actually, let's go back here. Uh, we hit Google. All right, did it again. Back again. Google, right? And then maybe Tesla. That's all you have to do. And of course, you can do as many different slices as you want within the pie. And then you click add. And then you go over here and you can see this new pie, right? Created on 1 slash 2021, which is today. And if you wanted to edit this pie, all you'd have to do is click edit right here. And then you could obviously determine or change whatever the percentage of each slice you want it to be of your total portfolio. You guys get it right so the beautiful thing about m1 finance is creating this pie right and you know making it the way you want it to be and then the other awesome thing you could do is you can actually have m1 finance invest for you through this feature called auto invest so if you're more of a hands-off type of person when it comes to your investments this is great because you can set up your pie you can turn on auto invest take a look here and you can turn it off and me personally, I have it turned off because I want to be more hands on with my personal portfolio. Again, if you're more laid back, you can turn on the auto invest feature and you could also turn on recurring deposits. So it literally, guys, this is the great thing about it. If you have auto invest on and you have recurring deposits, you literally don't even have to open up M1 Finance. All it does, let's say you have a hundred bucks going in every week. What it's going to do is it's going to invest that hundred dollars within your pie. And, and again, this pie, my pie has 21 slices. So if I put in $100, it's going to divvy up that $100 within all of those 21 slices based on the percentage that you've set 
for each slice. So that's honestly what's great about it and what a lot of people love about M1 Finance, but there's a lot more. And I have to tell you guys one thing before we get deeper into this. This is not an investing, or it is an investing platform. It's not a trading platform, meaning if you're a day trader, a swing trader, which I also do those activities, but if you're those people, day trader, swing trader, this is not for you because one thing that M1 Finance has incorporated is trading windows, right? Our trading windows, whatever. My grammar sucks. You guys get the point. There's trading windows, right? You guys can see here morning 9.30 a.m. Let me move this up so you guys can see it. Morning 9.30 a.m. tomorrow is the next trading window. And if you actually sign up for M1 Plus, you can actually get another trading window, which is at 3 p.m. on the East Coast. But I actually don't have M1 Plus. So I'm only able to buy stocks or or put orders through at 9.30 a.m. And the truth is, you don't get to pinpoint the exact price that you want to buy the stock at, right? It just buys the stock at whatever price it is at 9.30 a.m. So if you're one of those people that likes to pinpoint prices, you're a day trader, you're a swing trader, just turn the video off. This is not for you. But if you're more of a long-term investor, you're, you're looking to invest money that you're not going to touch for 5, 10 years, and you don't really care if you're buying, for example, Apple stock at $210 versus $210.50, you don't really care about the, the exact pinpointing of the price, then this is for you, honestly. And me, guys, with this portfolio, again, you know that I'm a day trader, swing trader as well, but I also long-term invest. And with this portfolio, I don't care if I'm buying Starbucks at $75 or $76 because overall, over time, I'm just continuously buying on a monthly, weekly, bi-weekly basis, whatever it is. And the average cost over time, it smooths out if you're doing it that way. So keep that in mind, right? Morning windows at 9.30 a.m. and the afternoon window again is at 3 p.m. on the East Coast. That is if you sign up for M1+. Plus. And by the way, if you guys want 30 free dollars from M1 Finance, check out that link down below. All you have to do is open up an account, deposit any amount of money. And again, if you're a long-term investor, if this looks like something you'd want to be a part of in terms of opening up, uh, opening up an account for them, you can literally get 30 free dollars right now by using that link. And I also get 30 free dollars since it is an affiliate link. So now let me show you how to actually buy stocks on M1 Finance. I have a cash Cash balance right now of a little bit over $180, $181.43 to be exact. And I don't want that just sitting in cash. I want to get my money working for me. So how am I going to do that? And mind you, again, guys, I have auto invest off. So I'm going to buy and pick and choose individual slices that I want to buy into. But if you had auto invest on, it would just auto invest this $180 throughout all of your slices. But me again, I have it off. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add some of this money into these different companies. Okay, so the first one I want to buy here is Duke Energy. So I want to click onto Duke Energy like I just did, and then you're going to see this uh, pie right here, but it's only highlighting the Duke Energy slice, which I only have about $280 worth of Duke Energy. So I'm going to click buy slash sell. It's going to pop up this order screen here, and you're going to put in, in this case, I'm probably going to do, let's say, 50 bucks, and you're going to do whatever you want to buy of any stock you want to buy, uh, but in this case, we're going to do 50 bucks. So you're going to put in 50 bucks, buy or sell. In this case, we're buying and that's literally it. You guys can see the buy orders. It went down by 50. Now I only have $130 left after this buy order of Duke Energy. And I click continue. Then I click confirm buy. And that's it. Now it's going to buy Duke Energy at whatever price it is at 930 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow once that trading window 
opens. And let's buy some more, guys. Why not? We're going to buy a little bit of Pepsi. We're going to put 50 bucks into Pepsi. Buy slash sell. Okay, here we go. 50 bucks into Pepsi. Click continue. Confirm buy. Let's buy a little bit more of Exxon Mobil. Uh, Mobil. I'm going to put the rest of this money, in fact, into Exxon Mobil because I'm pretty bullish on this stock right now. I've been buying it for a couple weeks. I've been buying it since the low 40s. You guys can see right here, my average cost is $42. We're almost at $50 now. So I'm going to buy a little bit more Exxon. This is a great company for a turnaround play. Great dividend company as well. So I'm going to put in $81.43 into Exxon Mobil, and that is pretty much how you buy stocks on M1 Finance. And of course, if you want to sell a stock, I'm not going to sell a stock in this video, but let's say you were to sell a stock, all you'd have to do is let's say go to Disney. I'm not going to sell Disney, but this is how you would do it. Go to Disney, buy slash sell. You go over here to sell, and you'd put whatever amount of money of that slice, in this case Disney, that you want to sell. And let's say I want to sell 100 bucks. You do 100 bucks, click continue, and it's going to sell out of that position at 9:30 a.m. tomorrow when the next trading window opens. So that's pretty much a rundown of how everything, not everything, but a lot of the important things work on M1 Finance, you know, how to buy, how to sell, how the trading windows work, how to create a pie, you know, how to add slices and so forth. That's very important. But you could also do a lot of other things here. You can actually get a checking account with M1 Finance. I personally don't have one, but that is an option for you. You could also do M1 Borrow. Um, you can borrow money at 2%. That's the lowest rate. And uh, it depends, on, of course, on your situation. But you could borrow money for from them. I personally don't do this either, but it is an option for you if you are interested in M1 Borrow. And another awesome thing about this, which is another pretty big highlight about M1 Finance is, let's say you didn't even want to create your own pie. Let's say you don't want to have those 21 slices that I have, you know, 5% in each roughly. Let's say you didn't want to do that. You can actually go to Expert Pies, which is going to show you guys a lot of pies from a lot of big fund managers out there, you know, hedge fund managers and and uh, and so forth. And you can look through all of these and actually just simply invest in these. I mean, take a look. If we go to the hedge fund followers pies, you guys can see here Berkshire Hathaway. That's obviously Warren Buffett's company. You guys know that. You should know that at least. And you can see all the different slices that they hold, you know, Apple, Bank of America, Coca-Cola, American Express, you know, Kraft Heinz, and the list goes on. And you can literally, again, like I said, just invest in this and be done with it and put it on auto invest and just not even worry about it. You could also, there's other ones, right? You have income earners, pies, you know, global dividend, you know, bank balance sheet, domestic dividend, all these different pies. You can do, you know, responsible investing, whatever that means. You can go here to general investing, click view pies, and based on your risk tolerance, you can do ultra conservative, conservative, moderately conservative conservative, ultra aggressive. I mean, take a look at this one, for example, you know, ultra aggressive, you'd be in VEA, which is a developed market ETF. You'd be in the S&P 500. You'd have some small cap, mid cap exposure. And if we go back to the conservative, this is ultra conservative. You're pretty much in treasury bonds. 82% are in one to three year uh, treasury bond, the, the SHY ETF here, which is a big exposure to bonds, you know, a little bit in small small cap ETF, a little bit in uh, in VEA, but for the most part, you're in bonds with this, uh, with this ultra conservative pie. So the idea here, guys, is to play with it, figure out your risk tolerance, and just invest. Get your money working for you. It's a beautiful thing. I mean, let's go back to my portfolio before we end off the video. Again, I created this portfolio for the YouTube channel from zero dollars, and now a year and a half later with constant contributions, additions, and of course, gains and dividends. Now it's over 
ten thousand bucks, and I plan on building this even further in twenty twenty one. Probably, uh, and my goal is, and I'm not gonna say probably, I will get it to over twenty five thousand bucks in twenty twenty one with dividends reinvested, of course, market gains, and with adding about a thousand bucks, five hundred to a thousand bucks per month into this portfolio. And you guys can see here, I mean, no joke, back in 2019 when I started it, I literally deposited $100 and you can see the growth over the past couple of uh, of months, especially, I mean, back when 2020 started, uh, I mean, guys, in the pits of the 2020 crash, I only had 2500 bucks in this portfolio and obviously it's recovered a lot since then. I, I've upped my, you know, additions and the gains have been kicking in and from 2500 bucks back in March, now it's sitting over again 10,000 bucks and I plan on getting this thing to 25,000 bucks in this year. So that's pretty much it, guys. That's pretty much it. There's other tabs here, but it's not really necessary to go over those. You can see dividends here. You can see your buys. You can see your sells. All that good stuff is right here in the activities tab. You can go to holdings as well. This shows all of your holdings with a more accurate return number. This is a 16% return since the beginning of the portfolio, 1500 bucks unrealized game. And funding history, you guys can see only deposited 950 bucks in 2019, but in 2020, I deposited over $7,000 in this account. And so far in 2021, I've deposited 300. So I'm slacking a little bit so far, guys. I have to add a little bit more money into it. But overall, that is it. Hope you all enjoyed the video. Hope you all have a deeper understanding of M1 Finance. And don't forget, if you guys want $30 for signing up and depositing and opening an account with M1 Finance, check out that if affiliate link down below. If you use it again, you get 30 bucks and I also get 30 bucks since it is an affiliate link and I do appreciate it as it does support me and this YouTube channel. So yeah, I appreciate you guys a ton for using that. So I'll catch you guys in the next video. Don't forget, hit the like button, subscribe, join the discord chat, all that good stuff down below. Again, thanks for watching as always keep crushing the market. Stay safe out there guys. Peace out.